When your mother-in-law is a witch, her name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. It's always interesting that um, it is the mother-in-law that usually people have problem with, not the father-in-law. Uh, but definitely I can say to you that there are also father-in-laws that have proven to be very difficult. Uh, but generally speaking, it's mother-in-law that we hear about. And some people have reached a point where they label their mother-in-law as a witch. I've listened to women explain how mother-in-laws have destroyed their marriage, have caused problems between them uh, and their husband, controlling their marriage um, and, and so on. But like I said, father-in-law to do that. So there are a lot of complaints about mother-in-law. What is this problem? Why do you label mother-in-law as a witch? Why do people always have problem with mother-in-law? The mother-in-law was also once a wife. And you are also a wife. One day you will also become mother-in-law. How would you also turn out to be? What is the problem? The basic problem is that when the mother-in-law is controlling, she controls her son. And usually at the detriment of their marriage, at the detriment of the wife. No wife wants that. No wife wants a situation where the mother-in-law has a say in their marriage. She does not have a say. Whatever the mother-in-law says or the father-in-law says, oh, sorry, yes, for the wife, from the wife. Uh, that's what the husband would do. That means the husband's parents, the husband's parents controlling the marriage, influencing the marriage. And it has so much happened that some marriages have actually been destroyed on account of this. What exactly is the counsel of God? Is your mother-in-law a witch? And if she's a witch, what should you do as a Christian? <laughs> First, I want to say that chances are that your mother-in-law is not a witch. But let's even assume that she's a witch. As a Christian, you have absolutely nothing to fear. A witch cannot destroy the marriage of a Christian. Now note this. I am talking about Christian marriage. Marriage of people who claim to be born again. So let me show you that it does not matter how wicked a mother-in-law is. It does not matter how deceitful a mother-in-law is. She cannot afflict, affect, control, influence a marriage that the husband and wife know what they are doing. Let's read a few Bible passages. Let's read a few Bible passages. Matthew chapter 12. And verse 25, it says, And Jesus knew their thought and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. The problem is not your in-laws. The problem is the two of you. When a man and his wife are united, nobody can come in between them. The, is it that you have married a man that is attached to his parent? Or the two of you do not understand the biblical principles for marriage? It does not matter the in-law. It's good to have good in-laws. As in. Somebody like me has been blessed with great, fantastic in-laws, Christians' in-laws, that I'm sure they are praying for us. They have been so wonderful. Now, but it does not matter even if you have terrible in-laws. The issue is that the two of you, are you one and are you working as Christ? I met a lady who was separated from her husband, probably divorced. Uh, she, she became a single mother. And then eventually we got talking and she blamed everything on her mother-in-law. When she finished telling me, I said, Madam, you are at fault. She said, no, that I didn't hear the story. That she, she, she start again. I said, I had all the story. I said, are you born again? You said, yes. I didn't see you conduct yourself in that marriage as somebody who is born again. You never conducted yourself as somebody that is born again. I now began to show her the instances that look at this instance. Is this how a Christian should respond? No. Look at this instance. Look at this instance. Look at this instance. Then she realized it. And a few weeks after, I don't know what happened, you know, because after we the discussion, we prayed together. And a few weeks after, she came again to see me. This time around, 
she came with her husband. They had reconciled. A marriage that had ended, that she was living alone with her daughter. They had reconciled. They came to visit me. So you see, the problem wasn't the mother-in-law. The problem was that the two of them didn't know what they were doing. No mother-in-law can come in between a house that is united. It's never a problem of mother-in-law. It's about you. If a mother-in-law says something that is not correct, the man can say, oh, mommy, I've had you. But he knows what he will do in his mind. In his mind. There was a lady who wanted to marry a Christian brother. And her parents called her and told her that, don't trust a man. So save some money, buy some land, build house secretly. Don't let your husband know about it. You know what this lady did? She went and told her husband. Her husband just smiled. Her husband said, they do not know us. They do not know we are true Christians. And, you know, they are building proper marriage. The man has gone ahead to build a fantastic marriage that is blessing people across the world. That is blessing people across the world. That people are looking as example of Christian homes. And that counsel they gave to that lady was useless. <laughs> it was useless. But you see, in some, in some setup, the lady will take to that advice. She will go and buy land secretly. Start building secretly. Then her husband would know one day. Then crisis will start. So the problem is not the in-law. So it happened to this couple. The, the in-laws tried to infiltrate, but they could not. Why? These two are united. It is a house that is divided against itself that cannot stand. Stop blaming in law. Let's look at Ecclesiastes. I'm sure you know that passage very well. Ecclesiastes chapter nine, chapter four, rather, and uh, verse nine. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he had not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have it. But how can one be warm alone? Now look at the wisdom of God there. He said, if two lie together. It's not that one is facing east and the other is facing west. One is facing north and the other is facing south. If they lie together, if they are united, if they are one, it is oneness that produces heat. Oneness, that's what produces heat. So, the in-laws are, are never the problem. The problem is the two of you. Your marriage is what the two of you make it to be. It's not the in-law. Even if they are diabolic, even if they are a witch, are you not in Christ? Why should you be afraid of witches? Witches are just one of the manifestations of the flesh, like adultery, fornication, envy, you know, sorcery, all of those things. They are manifestations of the flesh, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. So you, witches are not your problem. Colossians 1, 13, you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You are in Jesus. Your life is hid in Christ. So who can touch your life? The problem is between the two of you. <laughs> Let me read Genesis 2.24. For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. See, the problem is that you are not cleave. He said, look, let me read it. Let me read that passage. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. There is no cleaving. That's why there is no oneness. Some of you, the wife is cleaving to her own parent. The husband is cleaving, cleaving with, her own, with his own parent. There won't be oneness. You have broken the home. He that breaks the egg, the serpent will bite. You have broken the home. You have given room for people to infiltrate into your marriage. You are the one destroying your spouse before your in-law, before your parents. Say, mommy, don't mind my husband. Can you imagine? You see, it's the way you talk about your husband to your parent. That's the way they are going to talk to your husband. If you present your husband as a star, as a hero, as a wonderful man, that is how they are going to treat that man. But if you, if you present him as a rag, as a useless non-entity, they will help you to useless him further. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. Let's see something in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth the saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Are you living by the teachings of Christ? That is the issue. That is the issue. Are you building your marriage on the rock or on sand? Look at what Jesus said. He said, And then rain descended, and floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Your own marriage is failing, not because of the in-laws, but because you have not built your marriage on Jesus. You have not built your marriage by the teachings of Christ. You are not living that marriage by the life of Jesus Christ. That is the problem, not your in-law. Your mother-in-law is not a witch. You have no problem with your mother-in-law. No problem with your father-in-law. The problem is the two of you. If you stay together, if you stay united, nobody can break you. Nobody. Nobody can come in between couples that are one. For you to be one, you must cleave to each other. You must discuss to each other. Agree with each other. Do things as one. Many people go into marriage to remain as individuals. If you want to be an individual person or individualistic person, don't marry. You want to spend your own money the way you like. You want to sleep where you like. You want to have the kind of friend you want. Don't marry. Remain single. Marriage is being one. Many people are not making any effort in their marriage to be one with their spouse. It's foolishness. Why then did you marry? If you cannot become one with your spouse, why did you marry? You just want to create problem for another person. You can't remain your individual person in marriage. You must melt into your spouse. You must make conscious effort to be one with your spouse. Some of you, the only time you are together is when you want to have sex. Once you are done with sex, everybody goes their own way. Everybody do their own thing. That is not a marriage. There is no way you will not allow Satan to infiltrate that kind of marriage. And he will infiltrate it through people. And in-laws are usually close by as infiltrators. Your in-laws are not the problem. You are the problem. So stop being bitter. Forgive any in-law that may have hurt you. Forgive them. And work on your own marriage. The two of you resolve it. See, if you are, if you are a wife watching this or you are a husband watching this, call your spouse. Start all over again. Watch this together. The two of you should watch this together. And ask yourself, are we going to be, are we going to work on our marriage? Let me give you the principles that make that you can use. The most principle is one I've read. But I want to break it down further for you. Build your marriage on the teachings of Christ. That means you must both grow in knowing Jesus. If you are not growing in Christ, your marriage cannot grow. If you are not growing in Christ, your marriage will go into crisis. You must both grow in Jesus. It is as you both conform to Christ that your marriage can conform to Christ. Let me read Philippians for you. Philippians chapter 2. Let me read the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 to 4. It says, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love. Look at it. Be like-minded, have the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Don't try to outdo each other or prove a point to each other. I'm the one that have money. At least I'm the one working for my money. I can spend my money the way I like. You, are, you don't understand marriage. It's, it's, the money belongs to the two of you. Even if the wife is sitting at home. Is she not the one raising the kids at home? Is that the one that makes the money? It is God that is because of that woman. He's opening the door for you. He says, but in lowliness of mind. See how you should, you should have lowliness of mind. Lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. In fact, verse 5 it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ. This is the same mindset that Jesus operated with. So you can't operate with this mindset in marriage, and that marriage will not be successful. It is this your selfishness, self centeredness. Ignorance of the word of God that is creating problems that you are now blaming on in-law. Some of you husband, because you are not wise, you tell you, you told your husband to go and stay with your parent. And the problem from that has not finished it today. It's always good that your wife should be independent. 
You must have an independent home. You must not side your parent against your wife. You must shield your wife. You must defend your wife. You must always stand with your wife, not with your family. Your wife is the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. You must stand with her. You must defend her. Even if you have issues with your wife, you don't go and say that to your parent. Before your parent, you stand for your wife. When you and your wife are together, then you resolve your issues between the two of you. If you present your wife to your parent as a non-entity, they will treat her as a non-entity. If you present her as a virtuous woman, they will treat her as a virtuous woman. The same way as a wife, if you, if you present your husband as a useless man, they will help you to useless him further. But if you present him as a faithful man, as a diligent man, they will also respect that your husband. I pray that you will take heed to these counsels in the mighty name of of Jesus. So in conclusion, your mother-in-law is not a witch. Your mother-in-law is not a problem. But if you want to learn more about marriage, check the description below. The link is there. You will understand how to treat in-law better and how to relate and be one with each other. Enroll for the free Bible marriage course. Please, if you are watching this on our YouTube channel, just check the description below. All the links are available. Our contact details are also there email, phone number, social media handles. You can use any of them to reach out to us. Whether you are single or you are married, the links are there for you. You can either click on the singles course or the married course. They are free from beginning to the end and they are self-paced. In case you are watching this on our Facebook, check the about section. You see our contact details, but you, you may have to search for the title of this video on the YouTube and then you will find those links available there or you can just write us and we'll send you any link that is appropriate for you but make sure you are very specific with your request when you write but maybe somebody just downloaded this video and they are sharing it our phone number is this which is available on whatsapp plus two three four eight one eight six one five seven eight Five, two. That's our phone number. And our email address is living throne ministry at gmail.com. Please use any of those contact details to reach out to us. We'll be very glad to respond to you in whatever way the Lord will also help us to respond in the mighty name of Jesus. I am your brother in Christ, and my name is Olu Shebun Moku Olu. God bless you.